Recording started. We are uh, live. Uh, audio and video is up and running, so welcome to Statics. Um, uh, I need to update my notes because I have to be graded, and it was graded, and I've already posted the solution, but maybe I'll just uh, worry about that uh, for another time. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to extend our uh, discussion of moments to a little bit more of a general case. Uh, what we did up until now is uh, we... Um, we looked at uh, we looked at moments uh, in three dimensions, and then we looked at moments about a um, uh, the z-axis, which was uh, uh, the, how, what we meant by moments in 2D. I'm, I'm going to stop the share because I, this is kind of it's a little bit of an out there concept. It's not hard, but I think it's easier to see with um, with like a visualization. So, okay. Uh, what we uh, have defined initially, uh, the definition of a moment, R cross F, yields a vector, okay? So when I do R cross F, I get a vector for a moment, you know, some amount times I plus some amount times J plus some amount times K. And so what that means is, is if I have my three-dimensional coordinate system like you see here, and I have some force, you know, pointing out in space and some position vector from that force, then when I do R cross F, what I get is, you know, some amount of moment times the x-axis, some amount of moment times the y-axis, and some amount of moment times the z-axis. And that's that's what R cross F yields. Okay? Now, what we did on Monday is we said, let's simplify that a bit and let's look at moments in two dimensions. Now, that's a, a special case. And whenever you do moments in two dimensions, you know, you have forces only in the x-axis and the y-axis. And so all of your moments spin about the z-axis. And so we basically what we did is we took R cross F and all of the problems that we did on Monday and what you did, just did on your last homework assignment, we only considered the k component uh, of that vector uh, because it's all the moments around the z-axis. Now what I want to do is I want to generalize that a bit. So here's the idea. So let's say, you know, this pen... Uh, represents a force out in space, okay? And let's just say it's sort of pointing like this, okay? And let's say this little wood uh, stick that I have here represents some line out in space that I want to determine uh, moments about. So the idea is, okay, so this force, and I've got this line, so this force is obviously going to want to rotate this, this line. It's going to want to turn it this way. Okay, and so the question is how much? Okay, what is the magnitude of the moment um, about this line? Okay, and so the way that we end up determining that is this. So we have our new definition, or so we have our definition R cross F. R cross F tells us the moment that we have in uh, three dimensions. Okay, and up until now, you all should be familiar with the term lambda. So lambda is a unit vector. Uh, pointing in some direction. And so what we'll find here in a second is that if I've got some force out in space and I want to determine the magnitude of that moment about, you know, some line, some axis, then what I end up doing is I take that R cross F and I multiply it by this vector, okay? But I don't cross product it. What I do is I do a new type of multiplication called a dot product. Okay, and so we haven't talked about dot products yet, so we're going to talk about dot products today. So I want to introduce the concept of a dot product, which is, com it is super easy to do, uh, a dot product. And then I want to see how we can use a dot product to determine the moment about some arbitrary axis. If I have a force out in space and it's pushing like this, how much moment do I get about this axis? Does it want to turn counterclockwise or does it want to turn clockwise and how much? So, so... I guess from a, a philosophy standpoint, we're determining a moment about an axis, so really we only care about a number, okay? And so uh, if we're doing a dot product, a dot product should yield a number. So that should be a bit of a, a revelation behind what we're talking about today. Okay, so let's, uh, let, let's get back to the notes, uh, and let's, uh, let, let's recall a couple things. So let's recall a cross product. So let's just make sure we all remember this. So a cross product, if you remember, is one of the ways that we multiply a vector. And we call it cross products because of the notation, because we use the, multi the X multiplication symbol. Um, but the more formal name for a cross product is a vector product, because what we're doing is we're taking vector one times vector two, and we're yielding another vector, okay? Uh, and that's different from the dot product that we're going to talk about today. 
Um, let's also make sure that we're uh, comfortable with the formal definition of a moment, R cross F. Ultimately, it's just the force times the, uh, the moment arm. Okay, now let's talk about dot products. Okay, so a dot product is another way of multiplying a vector, and let's, um, let's talk about the motivation. Okay, so again, uh, last time we talked about a formula for moments in 2D, technically that was a specific uh, uh, formula for a moment about an axis. Ultimately, what we want to do, moments about an arbitrary axis, what we did on uh, Monday was moments about the z-axis, okay? And the other thing to keep in mind is what mattered is really what only mattered was the scalar magnitude. I mean, if you think about the problem that we did in class uh, on Monday and what you did on your homework assignment, you really didn't, like, when, the, when you looked at the moments in the end, it didn't matter whether you put it in vector notation, you could just write it as a number. Um, so what about moments about an arbitrary axis? So we need a new way to multiply vectors, and that enters the scalar product. So if you recall, when we first talked about uh, vector multiplication. We said there's two ways to multiply a vector. One way yields another vector, and the other way yields a scalar, okay? It yields a number, okay? And so that's the dot product. So let's define the dot product. So let's say I have two vectors, P and Q, um, and so each of them have a magnitude. Uh, I want to define the dot product. Now, what do I want the dot product to yield, okay? Well, first off, I want it to yield a scalar, okay? So um, the, 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 you know, I don't want it to be like the uh, cross product where I get another vector. I just want a number at the end of the day, okay? And so um, I, when I define the, the, the goals for the dot product, it needs to be, so if I have a uh, vector P and vector Q, I want the answer to be the magnitude of P times the magnitude of Q times the cosine of the angle between them. And why cosine? Well, if you remember the uh, uh, with the cross product, remember the cross product related the sine of the angle between the two vectors. So to make the dot product more unique, we are uh, a unique uh, uh, entity, we define it as the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. And that's actually gonna make the dot product a whole lot easier to derive, okay? So again, just to make sure we're on the same page, we're gonna define the dot product so that the answer is a number the answer is a number, and that number is the magnitude of each vector times the cosine of the angle, okay? Now, one other thing to keep in mind, because the answer is a number, the order of the dot product actually doesn't matter. Remember when you did cross products, the order mattered. You know, uh, A cross B does not equal B cross A, but that's not the case with the dot product because the answer is a number. You know, four times two is the same thing as two times four, so it doesn't matter what order you do the, uh, the dot product in. Okay, everybody with me so far? Now let's, uh, now we have to derive a formula for uh, dot products just like we did deriving a formula for cross products, but the derivation's a lot easier, okay? So we're gonna test this definition out on IJK. And remember, we want the dot product to be the product of three terms, the magnitude of one vector, the magnitude of the second vector, and the cosine of the angle between them. Well, if I test this definition out on IJK, hold on. Yes, the order of the dot product is irrelevant. And and yes, the, the order of the dot product is irrelevant. And you're gonna see, I'm, I'm actually gonna be able to prove that here in a second. So let's talk about IJK, okay? And so we're gonna get different answers for dot products involving IJK than we did cross products involving IJK. So first off, each of the vectors has a magnitude of one, which makes evaluating dot products with IJK pretty easy. And then now we have uh, now we have to talk about the angles. Remember, the goal of a of a dot product is that the answer yields the cosine of the angle between them. Well, if if I take let's say i and I dot i with itself, well, uh, the i vector dotted with i, well, it forms a zero degree angle with itself because it's going along the same line. Uh, so and the cosine of zero is one. But with the other two, so for instance, if I'm talking about the I vector, the I vector forms a 90 degree angle with its two counterparts, because these two angles are 90 degrees, but it's a zero degree angle with itself. So anytime that you do a dot product, what ends up happening is if you dot these products with them or these vectors with themselves, you get one. 
but if you ever dot them with one of their counterparts, it's zero. And again, because the answer is a scalar, the dot product is commutative. It doesn't matter what order you do the, uh, the dot product, then you get the same answer. So the way that we derive this is really easy. We do the, the same thing that we did before. And I know you probably saw this before. You're like, oh God, this is gonna be horrible. Trust me, this is easy. Whenever you do a, a, a dot product, you do sort of the same thing that you did before and you end up with this like nine by, you know, nine term system. But all you do is you look at it and you say everything that has a, a I dotted with itself, like this one right here has one dotted with itself. So that's a one. And any time where it's dotted with something else, like this right here is IJ, that's a zero. And so all you do is collect all the terms that are multiplied by zero and anything multiplied by zero uh, is, is zero. Uh, and this is what you get. Now, I wanna show you what this is like in practice because this is really easy. I mean, really easy. Okay, so look here on, on the board. So I have two vectors, I just made these up. Okay, so vector one is two I plus three J minus four K. Vector two is I minus five K. So maybe we ought to rewrite those just so we've got terms with all of them. We don't really have to do anything with this one. But just so that everybody knows where the numbers are coming from. So this is one I plus zero J minus 5k. So you can see I just put the, the coefficients in front of them. So I've got this vector here and this vector here. If you want to determine the dot product of these two vectors, again, super easy. All you do is take the coefficients for each of these vectors or each of these components, multiply them and add. So two times one plus three times zero plus negative four, negative five. That's it. So two times one is two plus three times zero is zero plus four times five is minus 20. The dot product is minus 18. That's it. That's the dot product. It's Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, sorry. I Yeah, <laughs> that's positive 20, yeah, 22. I didn't even have my answer written out. I didn't, I didn't even have, I just sort of just did it out. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Sorry about that. But yeah, the dot product, again, that's it. Super easy, so. Super easy. Any questions on that? Like, I don't even have a homework problem on the dot product because it's so easy. Now your calculator actually has, if you remember, uh, I showed you a video where uh, you could do the cross product in the Casio. The Casio has a means of automatically doing the dot product, but it's so easy that I don't see the point in doing it. Just, there you go. Okay. Um, let me go back to this. Okay. So this right here, this formula here on the bottom is how to do the dot product. So if you look at this formula, you can see it really doesn't matter whether you did P, Q, P dot Q or Q dot P. This is what, uh, in response to Mr. Davis's question, you'll get the, the, the same answer. Um, now the dot product, that's good, great, grand, and wonderful. Who cares? Like why, um, why do we compute a, a dot product? Why did we even derive it? Well, um, if you look at the applications, and I mean, there's, there's, you know, arguably more than this, but these are some of the three important applications uh, that I think are relevant to you as um, as sort of like physicists slash, uh, you know, those interested in, in engineering mechanics. So there's three important applications. One of them is just based from the definition, computing the angle between the two vectors. So I've got these two vectors here, and if I wanted to determine the angle between them, well, I've got the dot product, I can determine the magnitude of vector one and the magnitude of vector two, and then just solve for the uh, uh, the, the angle theta, and that would tell me the angle between the two vectors. So that, that's one uh, uh, important uh, application. Uh, another important application, which is kind of neat, 
is to determine what's called the, uh, the volume of a parallel pipette. And a parallel pipette is just sort of like a, 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 a prism uh, that's defined. It's sort of the, the volumetric region that's defined by three vectors. And so if you take uh, the cross product of P and Q, that'll give you the area of that parallelogram. And if you dot that cross product with S, it'll give you the total volume of the parallel pipette, which, I mean, that, that's neat. That's cool. Um, but what I'm really interested in for our purposes today uh, is this um, projection of a vector on an axis. Okay, that, that's sort of what I'm what I'm interested in talking about today, and that relates to the problem that I was talking about earlier. That it's like if you have an axis out in space and you want to determine the uh, moment generated by that force on that axis, then this is uh, this is really really important. So uh, let's talk about this. So uh, let's say that I have some vector P that's like out in space and I want to determine the projection of that vector onto, uh, onto some line OL. So I've got, you know, this vector here and I want to determine, you know, the idea, when I say projection, the idea is like if I was standing perpendicular to this OL line, how long would this be right here? I'm talking about from O to A. So you can sort of think of like, that's the vector that I'm interested in this O A. And so, you know, you can just look at this image right here and say that the, that the magnitude of that projection is just trig. You know, you just got the magnitude of P times the cosine of that angle, just adjacent over hypotenuse. But if I want to express P O L as sort of like a vector, um, what I need is a vector for OL. So inside here, I need a magnitude of a vector that isn't going to change the uh, uh, the result of this product. Well, I need basically a vector with a magnitude of one. So I need a unit vector. So I propose that if we define a unit vector, along that axis, we can project that vector onto that axis and determine the moment about that axis. So what we're what I'm proposing is that if we want to determine the magnitude uh, of a vector along an axis, we just take that vector and dot it with a unit vector along that axis. And that, that's, how we, uh, that's how we handle that. And so what does that mean for, uh, uh, for moments? Well, remember, the moment about a point is computed by R cross F. And so F is your force vector and R is the position vector. And so R starts at the point about which moments are taken, uh, which that's, I'm going to show you some pretty nifty stuff about that uh, in our example today. And it ends at any point along the line of action of F. And so what we're going to do is we're going to extend this by saying, if we take that moment vector and dot it with a, uh, uh, a vector along our axis in question, then we can determine the moment about that axis. And so, so instead of a just a cross product, if we take that cross product and dot it with a, we'll get the uh, a moment about that axis. Now, um, one thing you can do if you want to uh, do it shorthand uh, is uh, you can do R cross F and then separately dot it. But if you replace the I, J, K in your three by three determinant, with just the lambda terms, you can actually do this triple uh, cross product all at once. So the R cross F had like an I, J, K in this top row. If you replace the I, J, K with the lambda terms here, you can, uh, you can handle, uh, you can do that all at once. Now lambda starts anywhere on the axis about which moments are computed and it points anywhere to that line of action. So what I mean by that is here's the line of action we're trying to determine moments about this line and the force is here so here's the line of action of that force it goes you know in and out this way lambda needs to point from this line from this axis to the line of action and as long as it does that you'll get the same answer every time and i'll we'll sort of have some examples of that uh actually in our example Let, let's get to our example that's uh pretty critical So 
I have a, a an example that looks kind of complicated. Promise you, it's it's a uh, it's really not. So I have a uh, sort of this L shaped frame, this ACD. It's supported on the wall, and I got a load, uh, this sort of this P load that's hanging off the frame. Now, what I know about this is that the tension in cable BH, uh, in this BH cable, is 450 newtons. And so I want to determine how much moment that 450 newtons, which is going along this line here. So we're talking about the tension along, you know, the, the 450 newtons. Oh, goodness. I didn't mean for that to be a, a straight line like that, but that's actually not bad. Okay, the tension force is going along this line. And I want to know how much moment that's generating about that, about that AD line. Okay. So again, it's a little space age, but uh, there's some pretty, uh, uh, pretty straightforward math that we do uh, as a result. So let me just stop the share here, bring up our notebook, and we'll we'll see if we can handle this. All right. So. Okay, so again, let's take this one step at a time, all right? Now, whenever we're dealing with these 3D problems, I, I have found that the easiest way to handle it and, and to ensure that you don't have any uh, errors is to write out the coordinates of your points, okay? And so let's do point coordinates right now. And we're saying all of them in uh, ooh, in meters because the the uh, the the drawing everything's in meters. So I, I'm going to dispense with the with the writing of the units. All right. So I'm going to do point A, point B, point D, and point H. We could do more, and, and I, if you have problems seeing this in 3D, I, I suggest that you come up with more, but I'll tell you we're not going to use any more than these for this problem. So let's start off with point A. Somebody give me the coordinates of point A, and we've got our X, Y and Z axis labeled. So you should just follow each of these. But somebody help me out. Somebody tell me the coordinates of A. Well, we're talking about, okay, so you're right that it's the Z, we're talking about point, four, so just a point, so I'm just going to write it as 0, 0, 0, 0.75. So I'm not writing it as a vector, just as a as a point, but you're you're both right. You're, you're both right, because the vector is going to come here in a second. All right, um, how about point B, somebody else? That's correct. Uh, how about point D? Somebody else. Uh, somebody for D. That's correct. Yes, one zero zero. And then H. And while you're doing that, I'm going to erase the, the board here. And we got an H for me. That's correct, yes. 0 0.875, 0 0.75, 0. That's, that's absolutely correct. Okay. Um, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some colors here because this is, I, I could understand how this is going to be hard to see. Now, ultimately, what we need are three vectors. We need lambda, we need r, and we need f, and then we need to uh, evaluate that out. Now, 
let's let's go back to the problem to make sure that we're clear on this. What we're determining is the moment about an axis. The axis that we're determining moment about is this one right here. Okay. All right. So what I need ultimately, I need this. I need a unit vector about this, this uh, axis. So I need a lambda AD. And the reason that, because again, I mean, if you go back to the problem, what did the problem I'm stated? Determine the moments about that axis, okay? So if we go back to, I, I, I'm sorry for hopping back and forth, but I really want this to be clear because it's easy to get sort of mixed up on this. Okay, so again, we're determining the moment about the diagonal AD. Okay, so I need the vector AD. Okay, so again, apologies for hopping back and forth. I may do that a couple times, but I want that, I want to make sure that we're clear on what we're doing because uh, this is probably one of the more spacey concepts that we do in here, you know, like 3D type concepts. Okay, so let's do that unit vector first. Okay, now, if you ever want to determine, so let's do the unit vector. Let me let me scroll down a bit. Oh. Unit vector, and we'll say along axis A D. So if you want to determine the, the uh, unit vector along axis AD, we need vector AD. And the easiest way to determine the vector uh, from A to D is to just take the coordinates of point D, which is 1, 0, 0, and then subtract those from the coordinates from A. So 0, 0, 0 0.75. Okay, and when you do that, you get... 1, 0, and then negative 0 0.75. So I propose that AD is uh, I plus, or I, let's just do it like this, I minus 0 0.75K. And that is uh, in meters. Now, if you don't prefer doing it that way, you can just look at the drawing and the drawing, you know, if I go from A to D, what I do, I go positive, I mean, think, you know, if you look here at the drawing, I'm going positive one along the X axis. I'm not changing at all along the Y because it's along that same plane, but I'm going backwards in the Z axis. So you could do it that way or you could just do the coordinates. Either one works, it, it, it doesn't matter, all right? Now I need the uh, magnitude of AD. It is the square root of one meter squared plus negative 0 0.75 meters squared, which is, um, uh, help me out, what is that? Making sure everybody's paying attention on this on this wonderful Wednesday afternoon. One point twenty five meters. So therefore, Lambda AD is uh, one meter over 1.25 meters times I minus 0 0.75 meters over 1.25 meters times K. And so lambda AD is what? Somebody help me out with that. So lambda AD equals. There we go, 0 0.8i 
minus 0.6k. Um, and so, yeah, so that, that's kind of an important quantity. So I'll sort of box that so, so that I know. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So that, that I have that written down. In fact, I put here on the, that, that here on the board, which, by the way, uh, this doesn't really matter. But if you want a little factoid, if you want to determine the magnitude of a vector, you can take the square root of that vector dotted with itself. Let's say that works, right? Because how do you determine the the uh, magnitude? You take each term and square it. Well, that's that. That doesn't mean that doesn't really matter. It's just you know, kind of a uh, a little factoid. Okay. Now um, we have our. So remember to do the. Uh, uh, moment about an axis, we need three quantities. We need a vector describing that axis, which we have. That, that's what this is. This is the, the, the axis, the 0.8i minus 0.6k. Okay. The next thing that we need is uh, a force vector. Uh, well, we need a position vector and a force vector. I'm going to do the force vector uh, uh, next. Okay. Now, the force in question for this problem is the force in cable BH. So what I need is this, um, this force here. Okay. So we'll call this tension BH. Okay. So that's the one I need uh, next. I need the, the force vector describing that, um, describing uh, that force. Okay. Now, uh, this is something we've done before, so it's nothing. Uh, it's nothing new. Here, let me. Oh, uh, I forgot to turn my marker back. Here we go. This is nothing that we haven't done before. So let's um, let's write this out. So um, force vector along line line. B H because that's the that's the line along which the um, oh goodness gracious that's the line along which that force uh, is acting so uh, first thing I need is the vector B H which again what you can do is you can just take the coordinates of point H which was 0.875 comma 0 0.75 comma 0 and then subtract the coordinates of point B so 0 0.5 comma 0 comma uh, 0 0.75 and just subtract those and so we get minus or sorry that's not minus that's positive uh, 0 point okay if I have 875 subtract more I get 375 uh, 7.5, and then this is negative 0 0.75, so BH is 0 0.375I plus 0 0.75J minus 0 0.75K. And keep in mind, maybe I'll do it like this. That's in meters, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the... Now, let's let's go back. How do we write a vector in forces? Well, we get our distance vector, we turn that into a unit vector, and then we multiply that unit vector by the magnitude of the force, and then that'll, uh, that'll give us our force vector. So uh, we need to get the magnitude, which is... which is that, uh, and that equals, uh, somebody help me out, what is that? Uh, 
1.125. Okay, see, so I think you all know where this is going. We're going to determine a unit vector. Actually, let me move that down a little bit. And there we go. Um, all right. So there's that. And then uh, what I'm going to do is, is write this out. Now, when you chug this out, um, what you actually get is you get um, a third of I uh, plus two-thirds of J minus two-thirds of K. Did I get that right? Y'all help me out with that. One thing I can tell you is that that's unitless. Okay, good deal. All right. Or actually, that, that's, that's fine. Okay. So now, if I want to determine the tension vector, or the for that's the force vector for this problem, I'm going to take the the actual tensile force times that unit vector. What is the tensile force? Well, if you go back to the um, go back to the problem, and the problem stated that the tension in the cable is 450 newtons. So I know that 450 times that vector will give me the uh, uh, the t the force vector. Okay. So okay. So that's going to be. And that's going to be um, uh, 450 times a third is 150i plus 300j minus 300k in newtons. That's an important vector because that's our force vector. So I'm actually going to write that here on the um, on the board. So 150i plus 300j minus 300k. Okay. Now this is this part here is is wild and it's really cool. Okay. So I want to show you something. I, it's just crazy how this works. I, I think it's it's like one of the neatest things that we do. Position vector. Okay. So the position vector, what do we have? We have um, uh, where R needs to start and R needs to end. Now, Let's let's start off where R needs to end. Remember, when we're computing moments, we have R cross F, okay? R starts at a point, and then it ends at a point. Where does it end? Well, it has to end along the line of action of the force, okay? So... R ends along the line of action of F. Now, because we're uh, 
taking moments about an axis, I propose that R needs to start anywhere anywhere along the axis in question, okay? And so this is described by lambda AD, and in this problem, this is described by BH. So check this out. Um, I'm gonna show one way of computing R, and then I'm gonna show you what happens when you change that up and you still get the same answer. So, uh, let's try R from, I don't know, let's say from D to H, okay? Because D is along the axis in question, and H is on the line of action of F, so this should work. So H, the coordinates of H are... Uh, 0 0.875, comma, 0 0.75, comma, 0. And then D is 1, 0, 0. So uh, H minus D, so that minus that, that's minus 0 0.125, comma, 0 0.75 comma 0. So R is negative uh, 0.125I plus 0.75J. That is an option for R. I will show you here in a second how there are three other options that will all give you the same answer. So let's try that one. R, H, D is negative 0.125I plus 0.75J. And that's in meters. Okay. So if we do our moment, um, you can do this however you want. I'm going to show you the easiest way to do it. I propose that the moment about axis AD is lambda AD dotted with R cross our tension vector. And I'm just going to set this up like a determinant. So what do we have? We have uh, 0 0.8, 0, minus 0 0.6. And then we have this one's 150, uh, 300, minus 300. And then this is negative 0 0.125, this is 0 0.75, and this is 0. Now, I'm actually going to let you all chug this one out. I mean, you have, you can use the, uh, the rule of Saris, you can use the uh, cofactor expansion, you do it the same way, but I want to see what you all get for the moment uh, uh, generated here. So you can, you can do it however you want, but I want you all to chug this out and tell me what you get. I'm going to give you a minute on this. Remember, you can do that like this. You could say 0 0.8 times
sorry, that's minus. You can do the cofactor expansion. You can do it like that. Uh, you can do the rule of Saris. Anyone works. Anybody have an answer for me? All right, so Ms. Chapman's getting, I guess, ultimately that would be negative 90. Is anybody else getting that? Is anybody else having any issues, any questions? Okay, good deal. All right, now I want to show you something because this this is this is not so so first first off the answer is m is negative ninety and then it's newtons times meters or ninety newton meters uh, clockwise because remember clockwise are negative moments. Okay, now. I got, this is just, I just always found this crazy. Okay, so check, check this out. All right. Now note, other R vectors work. All right, example. All right, we went just now from H to D. Let's try from B to A. So if you do from B to A, um, uh, or sorry, for, sorry, sorry, from A to B, you get a vector that's just 0.5i, okay? Now I wanna show you something real quick. I'm gonna show you some Excel. You all like Excel, right? Hopefully you do. You're engineers. Engineers should like Excel. So check this out. I'll, I'll, I'll learn you something on some Excel. So All right. So setting up that vector or that, that determinant we just did, this is the one we just did. We had uh, 0 0.8, 0, and then minus 0.6, and then we had uh, 150, 300, minus 300, and then we had, what did we do? We had minus 0 0.125, um, 0 0.75, and zero. Now I wanna show you a formula in Excel called M determ. And what M determ does is it'll do the determinant of a three by three vector or a three by three or not. It'll be any square matrix and it gives you 90. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of copy and paste this uh, all over again, only instead of uh, uh, this R vector, I'm going to do the other one I just came up with, which is 0.5 I and zero J and zero K. Boom, same answer. In fact, there are other options that you can do. You can go from, 
Let's do another. Let's go from H to A. And if you go from H to A, you get 0.875 here, you get 0.75 here, and you get minus 0.75. But same determinant. I remember when I first saw that, I was like, that's nuts. That's insane. So the full, well, the full answers, uh, okay. So the way that you typed that out was negative 90 Newton meters. Probably what I would say is negative 90 Newton meters or 90 Newton meters clockwise, okay? Because the negative implies that it's clockwise. The, uh, if it was positive, it would be counterclockwise. Th does that make sense? Just so that it's clear. Any other questions? Again, I just I just thought that was amazing when I first learned that when I was in I was like, wow, that's crazy. The any any iteration of any iteration of going from A to D to B or H, any one of those options will give you the same moment. I just think that's nuts. Okay, everybody. Um, I uh, it's 151, and I know some of you got to get to class. You got a homework practicing this. Uh, and then uh, Friday, I think we're going to look at force couple systems. Uh, but that's all I have for today. Uh, I will see you all on Friday. You all have a wonderful uh, rest of your week.